is Medicare's income-related monthly adjustment amount? Well, here to talk with me about that is Amy Shepard from Sensible Money. Amy, welcome. Hi, Bob. Thanks so much. Oh, it's uh, thank you, because this is one of the more complicated topics that we discuss when we're talking about Medicare. So we're eager to have you walk us through what this is, otherwise known as IRMA. Yes, well, it's not someone's great aunt or, you know, a family friend or anything like that. As you mentioned, it stands for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, kind of a mouthful. So IRMA's the acronym. And really what it is, is it's higher Medicare premiums for theoretically those with higher income. All right. And so how does it work? So it works. Medicare premiums in general are always based on your income two years prior. If you want to get really in the weeds, it's based on something called your modified adjusted gross income. So it's a slightly different tax calculation. I think most people feel fairly comfortable if they pull up a tax return, they look for their AGI, that's easy to find. But then some people say, well, what's that M in the beginning? What's a, what's a modified adjusted gross income? And really for Medicare purposes, what that is, is um, you take your adjusted gross income, but you add back in any uh, tax exempt interest. So to give the details on that, if you look at your 1040 tax return, line 2A shows tax exempt interest. So you take that line 2A and you add it to your AGI and that gets you to your modified adjusted gross income. So that's the, the explanation there. But how it works um, you know, logistically is when somebody turns 65, their Medicare premiums are determined by their income, ta their tax return two years prior. So simple terms, you know, you turn 65 this year, your premiums are based on your tax return from when you were 63. Next year, you're going to be 66. Your premiums are going to be based on your tax return when you were 64. So there's always this two-year look back. Um, a little bit of a side story there. Sometimes people are curious, well, why two years? Why don't they just look back at last year? That's most recent, right? Um, and the reason for that has to do with tax filing. Not everybody files their taxes by April. Um, some people do extensions, and then just the timing makes it a little bit challenging there. So when you look back two years, it gives you know Medicare and Social Security enough time to actually look back and have something on file. So that's where it comes from. It's always a two-year look back, and some good news there is um, it's done every year. So the year you turn 65, if they look back at your income from when you were 63 and it was really high, some people have been panicked saying like, oh, you know, I'm going to be locked into these higher Medicare premiums for the rest of my life, and that is not the case. It's always a two-year look back, and the premiums are adjusted potentially you know, each and every year based on that process. Yeah, so there are six tiers of IRMA. So your premium may be based on which uh, income tier you fall into. There are. It works similar to uh, tax brackets. You know, there's a there's tiers for single taxpayers. There's uh, tiers for married taxpayers. But there are six. Um, currently for 2023, the lowest tier, so if you're lucky enough to pay the lowest premiums, it's just under $165 per month. And that is for single um, tax filers with income less than 97000 about, and then for married taxpayers with income under 194000 So on the low end, you pay about $165 a month per person for Medicare Part B. And then it goes all the way up to the highest tier, which is about $560 per month, you know, per person if it's a couple. Right. And if memory serves, I think the stats suggest that only 5% of Medicare beneficiaries that are actually subject to IRMA, which is not necessarily a large number, but if you're affected, uh, it certainly can be a lot. And I also should mention too, it's not just Part B, it could be uh, part C as well as Part D uh, that this IRMA affects as well. That is right. It's not just Part B. Part B, I think, is the biggest one people feel because that's the, the biggest chunk of premiums. But yes, it does. It can impact drug premiums as well. So how do you know if you'd be subject to IRMA? So you get a lovely letter in the mail, usually. Uh, hopefully it doesn't surprise you because hopefully as you've you know, been getting ready to switch to Medicare, you've done some homework, and maybe if you didn't understand it, you still have heard about IRMA. Um, but typically, somebody would get a letter in the mail, usually in the fall. So November um, is pretty common. I have 
personally had a lot of clients reaching out with those types of letters in the last six weeks or so. We're, you know, first week in December right now. So November had a lot of Irma action, if you will. But that's the, the common um, approach is you get a letter in the mail letting you know that based on your tax returns two year prior, you are subject to Irma. The letter uh, explains, you know, what tier you're expected to be in for the upcoming year. And it also includes inst instructions on what to do if your situation has changed and you don't think that it's appropriate for you to pay those higher premiums. So maybe talk more about that. How can someone avoid being subject to Irma? Yep, so there is in um, what I often call an appeals process, um, but it is a fairly straightforward process, which I think um, is maybe a, I think it's a, a relief because most things when you're dealing with Social Security or Medicare or you know taxes, nothing is ever simple, it seems. Um, but the, there is a form. It's available online, so anybody can look at the form. The technical name is SSA dash four four but it's a form that's about eight pages long has some instructions on it and there's really eight categories that allow you to essentially appeal that irma that higher medicare premium um, based on eight different life-changing events so kind of the standard stuff i feel like most people are familiar with life-changing events when it comes to health insurance in particular but the eight um, options are marriage divorce death of a spouse, work stoppage, work reduction, loss of an income producing property, loss of pension income, and employer settlement payment. And in my experience as a you know retirement income planner, the most common one I help people with is work stoppage. Um, you know, in other words, retirement. So you, you go, um, there's instructions in the, the notice you get in the mail, but you can also go online and download the form. And essentially you just uh, fill out what, what your reason is for your income changing. You have to explain why your income from two years prior is not relevant to your situation moving forward. And you, know, you check one of the eight boxes, you have to provide an estimate of what your income is going to be moving forward. And then the, the document asks you to provide some kind of proof of income. Um, so in my experience for folks who are retiring, that can be challenging because there really is no proof until you file future tax returns showing that your income has been lowered. And so the good news there is that as part of this process, you can submit basically like an attestation form, a, a signed document under penalty of perjury that you are saying, you know, I am truthfully saying that my income that you have on file from two, two years ago is not reflective of what it's going to be in the future. And the income information I'm putting in this form, you know, is accurate to the best of my knowledge. So that's a nutshell of, of how the appeal process works is it's just filling out one, one form. So outside of those eight things, there are some other ways that people can um, maybe avoid being subject to Irma with respect to tax planning. There are, yeah, there are some important ones. So I think um, a lot of people in the retirement space, especially, um, dare I say, get excited about opportunities like Roth conversions and things like that. I think tax planning is fun. And so um, there are some great opportunities to do tax planning in retirement. But um, one of the ways to do it most efficiently can be to monitor those IRMA thresholds. So, you know, sometimes people will want to do a Roth conversion and they'll want to convert up to the top of a certain tax bracket. But by doing that, they may also inadvertently cross over into another Medicare, you know, IRMA threshold. And so just being mindful of the rules is really helpful. If someone is doing a Roth conversion or if somebody is taking money out of a 401k or an IRA, they just want to look at what those income levels are. And the worst thing that can happen is if you cross over, you know, by $1, theoretically you're going to have to pay those higher medicare premiums for 12 months so if you can you know just plan ahead and watch what those um, different thresholds are you can try to stay within them so i want to talk about some real life examples but first maybe amplify that a little bit does it ever make sense to intentionally uh, pay the irma 
So it can. Um, that's a really interesting part of the, the retirement planning process as well. So um, for for people who have accumulated a, a fair amount in tax deferred retirement accounts like 401ks and IRAs, um, what tends to happen is if we put together a retirement projection that spans the next 30 or 40 years, um, you know, and we make conservative assumptions that those tax deferred accounts are going to grow over time, a lot of times what we see is that when somebody is in their 70s and their required minimum distribution start, often, you know, RMDs is the acronym there, but a lot of times when RMDs start in, in your 70s, that can cause you to move up in tax brackets and also move up in, in Medicare IRMA brackets. And so what we often do is we put together a plan that looks at somebody's, you know, life expectancy, the next three or four decades. And if we see later in life due to high RMDs, they may be subject to IRMA for you know, many, many years, what we can do is we can come back to the front end of retirement and we can do things like Roth conversions or we can do things like um, IRA or 401k withdrawals early on. It might mean you take more money out of those tax deferred accounts now and you do, you know, intentionally trigger IRMA, you know, two years from now or, you know, for the next several years if you do it ongoing. But what the benefit is, is maybe you do that and you pay IRMA knowingly and intentionally for a few years and in exchange later in life, now you don't have to pay IRMA or you have to pay less IRMA, you know, for the rest of your life. So it, it can absolutely make sense in the right situation. All right. So I know you have plenty of real life client stories to tell. Do you want to walk us through some of them? Yeah, um, most of them are, are nothing crazy. It's just kind of real life situations. And I definitely the most common one I deal with is retirement. So somebody it has been used to, you know, working with a fairly high income and now they've retired, but their income is going to be quite a bit less without those paychecks coming in. And so that's a straightforward, fairly easy one to um, file that appeal form. You just, um, you know, you use the work stoppage a life-changing event and you sign that attestation saying, you know, my income moving forward is going to be less. That one happens all the time. Usually um, no complications there uh, in, in terms of trying to reduce those Medicare premiums. Yeah. And, and do, you find, do you find that, just a quick question, do you find that the uh, Social Security office um, uh, will accept that um, that appeal? Yes, usually they do in those kind of straightforward situations. I actually can't think of a single instance where somebody did retire and they had, you know, the fairly straightforward situation of, hey, my income was higher when I'm working. Now it's lower. Um, every time I've ever dealt with it, it has been approved. Um, something important to note there is that it um, can be approved, but then taken away later on. And so I have seen that twice actually just in recent um, weeks. So a client filled out that appealed appeal form. They said their income, you know, in 2022 was going to be a certain amount and the, the appeal was granted. But then they eventually filed their 2022 taxes and the income on their tax return was higher than what they had told um, on that form. And so retroactively, they were they were required to pay those higher premiums the upcoming year. Um, you know, the good news is there was no penalties. I know sometimes people are worried about things like that, but it does catch up to you. You know, the um, Social Security and Medicare want to make sure people are, are paying their fair share. Um, but that's a really common one is retirement. Um, I've also seen instances where somebody has um, a deferred compensation plan that gets paid out in a lump sum, typically after retirement, but that, that deferred compensation income on its own can trigger a high income year that may trigger IRMA. Um, severance packages are a common one as well. So, you know, companies do layoffs. If you're lucky enough to have a severance package, that always feels great in the moment, but down the line, it could trigger one of those uh, letters in the mail. Um, another common one is like sale of a rental property. So, uh, you know, many people have rental properties, they have that rental income. And then if they sell the property, it can, it can be a, a double whammy, you know, they sell the property, so they lose the rental income, but then they also have higher capital gains reported on tax return. So those are things that can trigger IRMA. And then um, and, and one time income as well. So 
in my spare time, I, I may uh, enjoy playing a game of bingo every now and then. And um, gambling winnings is one time income. I can't say I have ever won a bingo jackpot, um, but that is something that if somebody is at a casino or you know is lucky enough to win a, a lottery of some sort, um, that type of one time income can also trigger Irma as well. So it's it's an interesting and complicated uh, topic. It, it seems like the best thing that people can do is be aware that this could happen to them and perhaps uh, plan for it. As you think about expenses in retirement, being surprised by the possibility of there being an IRMA charge for even one year needs to be factored into the plan. Yes, it is a big expense. Um, you know, I think most people are well aware that healthcare and taxes are two of the biggest, you know, financial items in retirement. But um, it's not as simple as you know just regular healthcare premiums. And Medicare is not as straightforward as, hey, you switch to Medicare and you you're locked into this premium. There are there's more to it as we just discussed. So I definitely agree with planning ahead. Um, we covered a lot of ground, Amy. Anything we missed, or anything that just bears reemphasizing? I think we covered it all, and uh, hopefully it's helpful to everybody out there listening.